informative uh, webinar session on technology and uh, importance of quality accreditation and how technology plays a uh, you know prominent way for building smart hospitals in the future so uh, by considering the covid pandemic we have seen n number of you know improvised technologies coming on board services coming on board to help hospitals and also doctors together so we have eminent speakers dr mervin leo and mr farid udin said sir to discuss the importance and how the process is going to help the future of uh, healthcare uh, fraternity in the country over to you sir yeah so good afternoon all and uh, i'm dr mervin uh, currently heading the emergency department of uh, dr mehta's hospitals so uh, formally i was into uh, a cluster head role with global hospitals hyderabad so uh, with uh, with nine nine years in quality and aggregation uh, with nabh and uh, and totally with uh, 12 years of experience in healthcare as an administrator so <clears throat> so glad to meet you all and uh, today we we are discussing about quality and uh, tips and uh, important things why quality is important to each one of you and and how to improve uh, human uh, you know standard of living with patient centric care delivered to patients so so bear with me for another 15 to 20 minutes so that i can uh, brief you on my ideas and thoughts about uh, aiming and achieving good quality and safety for the patients and uh, and i will give you my examples how i came across and what difficulties i have faced do's and don'ts and uh, and uh, what is booming today and what is future so th this uh, these categories uh, will uh, you know comprise of all the necessary uh, requirement uh, you know um, uh, uh, data which can be given to you from my side so <clears throat> initially uh, we have to first uh, think what what is required for a hospital what is the problem uh, in the hospital it can be a single specialty hospital or a multi specialty hospital or a super specialty or a quaternary care hospital but we should we should know what is required for the hospital so we have to we have to brainstorm uh, uh, you know with the problem that's where you you end up uh, having a technology around it and which can help in uh, quality and safety of the patient first we need to commit to the problem say for example um, it might be a simple problem your hospital might be a 200 year old hospital or a 100 year hospital where you have minor cracks in the wall or uh, electric failure or uh, or a ceiling cementing issue or a water leakage so we have to commit to the problem so it's always uh, com committing to the problem you know correction corrective action and prevention that's how quality is uh, work around so then then you have to catalyze the problem so what sort of problem if you don't fix it in a day or so what is going to happen if you don't fix it in another 6 months what's going to happen in another year if you don't fix it what's going to happen so we have to catalyze the problem and then measure so we should verify and validate see if you fix a problem then we have to have a verification uh, mechanism and somebody has to validate it and then enhance uh, the and, and and then embrace the uh, you know uh, the issue which is being solved and then go then jump on to the next issue and it's a continuing process as well as uh, quality we all know that it's a very continuous process so we have to enhance and continue the thing embrace the problems and issues so a lot of hospitals will face a patient safety issue uh, um, a doctor communication issue um, a prescription error issue uh, so many issues so many issues which which uh, you know the, the patient uh, safety patient goals patient rights so many so many sorts of issues we we come across uh, day to day but these days uh, what we are facing is say for example uh, we have uh, say for a simple uh, medication error these days we have developed uh, electrical me medical record system which is embedded into the his and we follow sim uh, which is also embedded into the system so uh, <clears throat> when you have electronic medical record it it helps in you know uh, the uh, spelling mistakes the errors the uh, the time uh, time timely delivery of medicines to the patient and it it shows the correct way of improvement rather than writing down on a piece of paper say for example uh, when uh, when we say you know um, a doctor's handwriting uh, only a, a pharmacist understands but still 
pharmacist also doesn't understand sometimes say for example uh, if you don't uh, write down in a capital letter there could be a, a, a major uh, error say for example uh, a patient came with a cough and a cold and uh, acitral 500 mg was given written and given in a piece of paper that the doctor knows but when it ended up in the pharmacy acitrom was given so which is a blood thinner so again uh, the inr shot up the, the patient started bleeding and ended up uh, in the hospital so inr <clears throat> and the same same uh, milligrams was given like 500 of acitral 500 of acitrom was given so this, this patient just came in for a cough and cold and ended up uh, uh, devastated in in a, in a shape so this is all we all need to understand you know uh, and uh, you know uh, catalyze this problem measure it say for example this kind of error uh, came into our knowledge and this happened but without our knowledge so many things other happen it doesn't come into our knowledge so that's the reason we started emr and doctors started using and adapting the emr facility because uh, it it automatically uh, brought down uh, drop down uh, drop down of uh, medicines which is uh, embedded to sims so the mistakes uh, didn't happen much and it was easy for us to capture mistakes also because it's all documented and the system carries the documents one and patient safety and next comes the patient safety tool so we have a lot of tools in the in the market and and each hospital adopts a different tool and uh, we uh, once the patient enters the emergency or the er or through the opd we uh, sister immediately the nurse uh, in charge or the nurse uh, the team lead goes to the patient analyzes the patient and uh, is the patient uh, you know vulnerable to fall or not all that is being understood then <clears throat> And then, but still, even though it is analyzed, we have at least uh, five to six patient falls uh, in a month in a hospital. That's for sure. And a patient could have a slip and fall in the restroom, uh, can have a fall from the bed, can just uh, when the patient is mobilized, she can he or she can fall from a chair. So, so many other thoughts. So that's when we developed a system uh, where uh, where a patient <coughs> wears a band. Where, which is embedded any jerks or any such involuntary movement that band can capture and give a, a signal to the patient the nursing uh, station where uh, you know uh, that's an alert to the system that the patient is having some tremors or not able to stand properly so it needs assistance so all that can be embedded see uh, basically we cannot uh, you know we, there are other software like you know uh, bed sitters uh, which is uh, connected to a video where always a patient is monitored from the nursing station via camera but uh, again uh, in india we have uh, privacy issues so definitely we cannot do that so this can be an alternative modality in the sim similarly for example another patient we have uh, these days coming up with sugar fix and sugar uh, monitoring system which is embedded in the body which is a the size of a one rupee coin and it is just stuck to the patient's body where the sugar is monitored timely and there's there's a sensor which sends the you know uh, the values to the system when the sisters can monitor uh, a chart and the data is available in front of them in a in a series of two, two seconds so these kind of uh, systems can help us uh, grow and uh, nature uh, the patient safety so why I brought this uh, as a sugar issue is, say for example, we had a patient uh, not here but uh, in another hospital where <clears throat> where uh, these days we used to follow you know a sliding scale, but uh, but the sliding scale also doesn't bring down the sugar level at some at some patients because uh, either they are uh, very poor sepsis and other other infections can lead to the the high sugar values and you know can be acidotic and the sugar value doesn't come down so so <clears throat> say for example basically uh, average sugar sugar insulin value for for a patient was given around uh, 20 units to 30 units um, suddenly the sugar went up to 400 and the patient was given 20 units uh, for uh, for uh, 400 uh, 400 uh, sugar and uh, eventually patient came down to 137 but uh, that, that is the time she he or she had put and then again uh, the nurse had to administer the regular uh, insulin dose so she administered another 20 mg uh, 20 microgram of uh, insulin then the patient uh, went into hypoglycemia then ended up in an icu so 
here what i wanted to say is so, so continuous sugar monitoring is just a trick which we uh, go to the patient and do every time and it's definitely a painful task for the patient as well as the staff to give a prick every time so this kind of uh, bands can really help in sugar monitoring and can uh, you know prompt us what sort of uh, medication uh, this patient would require and what insulin level needs to be administered to the patient so there can be a double check on that and a double check with the doctor as well uh, <clears throat> to um, modify the dosages accordingly so that the insulin system is regularly monitored see you and i uh, sitting down have, have a different sort of insulin consumption in the body but patients who are really ill has a different uh, day to day difference would be there in insulin consumption that's where this kind of technology can help so next coming uh, into uh, into telemedicine which is now these days booming so why telemedicine concept uh, it was previously there and uh, this pandemic has brought in a great effort and telemedicine has been adapted uh, uh, throughout the world and uh, and uh, see telemedicine can help us even see you just need to have a app and a software and some uh, low band internet service to reach a doctor or reach anything in the world so uh, the patients who are in tier 3 cities in districts and remote villages where they cannot uh, access healthcare uh, that frequently and meet a super specialist would take uh, would take around uh, 250 to 300 kilometers of travel then meet a super specialist but on a, on a click uh, on a, on the go you have a super specialist or available on a telemedicine platform so there there you can meet the doctor face to face you know discuss your problems prescription is also available online and the prescription can be you know administered at the hometown and a two to two or a second or a third tier city van they don't have super specialty uh, physicians and surgeons so this definitely helps and they don't uh, and they don't need to travel for a second consultation or a third consultation all the way 300 300 km say for example a person is having a neurosurgery at a tier one hospital which is 200 to 250 km away from their village and they go back and they cannot meet, meet the doctor uh, next 15 days because a neuro patient cannot be mobilized that frequently and and the the mobilization itself will take them um i know a huge toll on the family maybe a 10000 or 20000 on the ambulance travel but on a click of a button the telemedicine service is available and this uh, third tier uh, three patient can definitely reach to a super specialty consultant so telemedicine is booming and not only uh, meeting doctors the ph- the pharmacy is reaching home the labs are reaching home and what not everything is on online and everything you, you don't need to move around for lot of things and you don't need to reach a hospital to meet a doctor eventually that is booming and definitely that is enabling the doctors and the patients also to be satisfied at meeting the doctors one next uh, see uh, there are a lot of as per who there are a lot of ideas which uh, who gives from time to time so uh, we should know what what needs to be collaborated for technology what is the digital strategy around it and uh, and we should be motivated in uh, doing lot of digital health programs and uh, this this all this put together should be human centric that's the main goal of who so who is also uh, you know working on this as well as an indian government is definitely coming up with a lot of uh, digital health the ministry of health is coming with uh, uh, digital health uh, which mainly deals with telemedicine these days so so what uh, this uh, this uh, digital health digitalization means that you will have one digital id for across uh, globe and uh, with that id any hospital or any uh, uh, government hospital can directly access your health card and definitely pull out see in another country in developed country like us they have ssn numbers and uh, unique health numbers so whichever hospital they go they have the health record of that particular person either they they are tracked with ssn and in india we can uh, definitely do with our aadhar number so that's that's booming and definitely that uh, that uh, will pay pay uh, definitely a very good strategy for healthcare uh, eventually in coming days so uh, these are the key points i wanted to add and i just as i earlier least uh, earlier said what um, what could help quality and how can quality help and i just want to uh, you know brief on certain things so uh, in 2020 yeah 2020 we had floods in in the state of uh, telangana 
especially uh, in the districts of LB Nagar. So there were about three to four days of uh, 22 to 28 centimeters of rain, which is very huge. And uh, they are not connected to major seas or any other uh, drain pathways. So uh, they, they, they are up and down. So, you know, it's like, you know, some part of the uh, city is up and some part of the city is down. So water comes and collects to the down, downhill. So 22 uh, to 28 centimeters continuously four days of rain. Uh, so we had uh, one one and a half one feet of water coming into the hospital. Then uh, we thought that the rain would stop, but eventually it continued. And again, uh, 28 uh, uh, centimeters of rainfall we had, and and the hospital is slightly lower than because the territories uh, are like that. Uh, the hospital is slightly lower than that of the surrounding area. So uh, the water grew up in the surrounding area. Because the gush, the walls around the hospital broke, so the entire flood had happened into the hospital. Around uh, 700 feet of water came inside the hospital, so entire ground was almost touching the ceiling. We had to shut down. And uh, usually in hospitals, what uh, we face is, uh, and uh, we what we have is the oxygen plant will be in the uh, on the ground. You have the entire electrical panel, the transformer in the ground floor. You will have your generators in the ground floor, and especially you will have diesel tanks either on the ground floor or inside inside the floor. So all this, you know, if you have a diesel tank inside the inside the floor or uh, down the ground, the water definitely will come and collect, and you cannot even run the generators even though there's a uh, electricity cut. So, and the gush of water was so quick, it came around from four feet to six feet six feet very quickly within a span of ten minutes. So. There were there were a maintenance fee team working in and around the hospital, so they had to enter into the hospital, uh, climbing a ladder into the pipe and then breaking a glass and entering into the hospital. Uh, but luckily, what we what I planned was, uh, if the generator goes off and we couldn't get a out generator from outside because there was a huge uh, water table outside, so the the JCP or the lorry whichever could bring a generator couldn't come in. So we had eventually cath lab battery. We had to break in the cath lab battery to uh, provide uh, electricity support to the hospital from the cath lab. Especially and due to COVID, we had faced a lot because COVID ICU was different, the normal ICU was different. So we had to pull up patients from both ICUs separately and keep them in a single area because we had to uh, pull the resources and give resources equally. So we had to pull uh, the patients, COVID and non-COVID, put together. And supply uh, the current to that particular food load from the cath lab uh, uh, UPS backup. So we could save uh, we could save around six to seven uh, patients who are on ventilator and successfully transfer to the next hospital the next day morning. And uh, and other patients who are in ward, we could supply oxygen because oxygen is a key because oxygen also will be on the ground floor so that uh, we cannot uh, run run motor and pump. So we have to have. Uh, definitely oxygen tank, bigger oxygen tanks, we can, we can push in a lot of pressure from the oxygen tank to the patient. So the main, the main thing which we could survive was uh, through the cath lab current. And next day, what quality plays a major role here is, see, we should, we should understand one thing where we can give uncompromised uh, patient-centric care and we should, uh, we should be, uh, you know, double robust in, uh, in enabling patients, taking care of them, First, bringing down the fear and um, making sure where what is required and pooling of resources is the key here. So this all happened to you know work simultaneously, simultaneously hand in hand because the current went down. The you know we didn't have telephones to contact each other and we didn't have the current to charge phones. So whatever bare minimum we could do, we did and uh, we pulled the resources and we couldn't get food for patients that night because. Water uh, pulled in the canteen. Canteen also usually is in the ground floor, so canteen was flooded with seven feet of water. So we had to uh, go into the purchase room, understand what is there, and we we, we gave biscuit packets and other uh, water bottles which were uh, in the uh, central stores. So all this we have to plan and plan an action. So I I did jot down all this and gave a, a plan of action to to my higher ups, and then they were very pleased with that, and. And shifting of patients, so we should know which patient, where it went, did the continuity of care, 
uh, hamper or did we continue the same care in the other setup where we transfer the patient the next day morning so uh, we had in and out system we had given uh, you know temporary badges and uh, uh, we made sure that one patient ex exits down the icu that the next patient comes out and that patient has to reach the uh, nearby center where the, the scene is safe and uh, the treatment continues so we made sure about seven to eight ambulances uh, in a line and transferring patients in and out from here to the nearby hospitals and all this were done in a four feet of water i approached uh, the health i approached the uh, the police people and uh, none of them came for help because uh, the entire village around around the hospital was flooded so ndrf team had only two boats so they were uh, tra transporting civilians and uh, they were much more <coughs> busier uh, in that place and uh, they could reach us for help and helicopters don't land that that uh, in that area so we couldn't get get a chopper as well so the only way is to take the patient through the water so what we did is uh, we waited for some more time in the morning from 6 a.m to 7 a.m then we we see we saw the water residing from around 6 feet to 4 feet then we had to pump in the the stretcher to 4 4 and a half feet so that it it just goes around so we had four people pushing down the you know stretcher all the way through the water for for about 40 45 patients and then the patient was transferred to a neighboring branch of the same hospital and uh, patients were all safe so we should always plan a, a good quality hospital having the base we should think the worst of the worst so definitely an oxygen tank to be placed at at, at, at least in the first floor uh, not you don't need to have a generator or a, uh, the transformer in the first floor at least your entire ups backup should be at one level up and uh, we you know uh, we faced after after all this again after 20 days of uh, you know the water water didn't reside there was a 4 feet of water and the ground level of the water itself was 2 feet even though you pump out lot of water the 2 feet of water still stayed in the hospital so we had to wait another one one and a half week for the water to reside then when we entered the hospital the hospital was full of fungus the, the slush the mud you know the entire hospital the monitors ventilators cots the ct machine the mri machine Uh, the canteen, the entire ground floor was washed away. Uh, so we had to rebuild the hospital. And uh, what we figured out was the entire wall had fungus. So we had to paint the entire wall with antifungal, antibacterial, and we had to bleach the entire hospital for three times to make it make sure that uh, the hospital is safe enough. So we did a uh, triple quality check on water. We, we we cleared the entire floor. We had. lot of swabs taken in and around the hospital making sure that uh, the quality and the patient doesn't suffer with any other super rare infection so we had to do a high dusting high cleaning the vents were cleaned thoroughly in and out we had to clean uh, the vents and then the, the the hospital had to restart so all this were uh, key uh, major points where we need to look look into and then open the hospital back successfully we could achieve this uh, all of this in another 15 days and the hospital came back and ip services start started from the next commencement and this happened on october 13 and we could start back the hospital on november 2nd which was splendid and uh, and uh, everywhere uh, we, we could you know approach our patients and uh, ask their feedback and patients that night who got discharged the 45 patient we took a uh, you know a feedback from them they said uh, what could have been a better than your services sir in in times of crisis also uh, uh, you had uh, helped us and we were transported and uh, the key thing which was noted here is safety so we could we could manage the safety and uh, we transferred all the patients and patients did well after that and uh, the mortality was zero for that night that's a great key inspiration that's where quality played a major role in uh, in healthcare so that's all from me and uh, good luck and any other questions uh, will be answered at the end of the session and and over to uh, mr farid who is an inspiration and a quality uh, you know uh, uh, parent and uh, he has done a lot of work around the uh, indian territory so over to you sir
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marvin. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Marvin has been talking about uh, the technology in uh, the health sector or hospitals, which is actually referred to if we uh, would like to uh, focus on that, it, become, it is called health tech nowadays. Now, health tech is, uh, what does it mean? Health tech uh, uh, covers all the technologies and uh, developed for the purposes of uh, uh, right from the, for covering all the aspects of uh, healthcare and improving for improvement of all the aspects of healthcare, including uh, from the registration uh, to the robotic surgeries, from telehealth, registration, appointments to robotic surgeries is a vast uh, and it covers the it includes the medical devices it systems algorithms and uh, 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 artificial uh, intelligence ai the blockchain and uh, these are all to support the uh, healthcare organizations if we talk about appointments at the for registration opd registration if we see, for for example, we can even uh, opt for uh, and, uh, the online registration system. The online registrations, you know, that enables the patient to register from his mobile, his or mobile from their houses, and uh, they know the number and they can uh, reach the hospital. And they don't have to the waiting time is reduced for the patient. So all these uh, technologies do help in all these things. And uh, uh, OPD at the counter also, when they go and the computerized registration is there, the, the same uh, personal and dem demographic details of the patient, you know, it uh, is communicated directly online to all the clinics and to the doctors uh, sitting in the clinics. And uh, and uh, they don't have to write again and again the same things. Even in the IPD, for IPD, if the patient has to be admitted, the same registration can be initiated by the doctor uh, seeing the patient and, uh, and the, the demographic details will continue. The same thing. Otherwise, I, uh, initially, when there was no uh, computerized system for registration, uh, I used to say when uh, long back I worked on medical system, which was on a me mechanical uh, system, just preparing some uh, uh, documents by hand and then sending out for the various diagnostics over days of stay of the patient within the hospital. And finally, when the patient was coming out, so there was there was a very live example for that, that from Ram Lal Ajmeria, who was uh, the actual, uh, that was the actual name of the patient, Ram Lal Ajmeria. When he was uh, discharged from the hospital after getting treated and uh, getting good, uh, getting well from the disease, <laughs> his name was written as Ram Lal Ajmeria. So that was all typographical errors, which we had seen uh, over the years, uh, uh, when the mechanical systems and the typographical er errors, when the manual systems were working, so the, we started working on medical records with the uh, master plate masters and uh, uh, master plates, and then which had all the details which uh, the plate used to be carried along with the patient file to various uh, diagnostic areas where on the reports even the same name was given and at the discharge ticket also the plate was sent and the, there was a small machine to print and to put the plate in and print it. There was no computer, it was all mechanical at that time. So the, I'm talking about 1980s. So it was all uh, during that time. So from that time to today, uh, where we have, uh, we don't, you don't even have to see anything, uh, uh, talk to the patient on those details. You just get his Aadhaar number and you get all the details from that, from there. So all the uh, patient personal details, the address, the uh, phone number, the age, uh, whatever, 
you have we want all the details are available on the Aadhaar card and you just uh, digitally download it and uh, get all the details and put it on the computer. Now, uh, after this, uh, uh, how does it help in accreditations? We'll talk on that. Uh, let us see what happens when the patient is admitted and goes to the that we also have seen uh, patients sitting there, technology helping out uh, the patient calling system. The patient calling system, again, after OPD uh, registration, when the patient goes in. So there also, the patient calling system is there. The, the mic and the speaker is used and the patient calling system, the number is uh, called out and the patient goes to, into the hospital. And he's, before that, he's comfortably seated on the, in the uh, waiting area. So we have seen this change over a period of uh, so many years now uh, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, changes have happened, taken place uh, with uh, the, the quality accreditations coming into line. Though quality accreditation, I would again say, it's not mandatory to run a hospital. If you are not accredited, that does not mean you are not running. You cannot run the hospital. It is there, but with quality accreditation, what will be the advantage of uh, using a, 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 a accreditation for the patient? A patient. Uh, uh, why? Why does an accreditation happens? Accreditation happens because. Uh, uh, what What do you mean exactly by accreditation? What is exactly meant by accreditation? Accreditation is a process where the hospital has to uh, is uh, showing the uh, the standards uh, jotted down by the accreditation uh, authority and uh, the standards by their uh, ministry and and following uh, they, they show that they follow these standards and they maintain these standards of uh, quality as well as clinical standards, standard uh, treatment guidelines are being used. All these things are uh, used. And then uh, these things, uh, the accreditation, uh, the person who is uh, assessing the hospital will uh, look into all those aspects and then uh, they'll do the, their marking, the compliances and the non-compliances will be noted uh, as per the uh, standard than the checklist what they have. So these accreditation will uh, be uh, helpful for the hospital to uh, create their own customer base. The patients will definitely, who will not like to go to a hospital which has been, which is not certified, who will, who will not go to a hospital which is certified uh, for quality certification is given. NABH is written, NQS is written. And the, all the meanings that uh, the hospital has uh, shown uh, their ability to perform as per the standards laid down by the ministry and as per the standards uh, laid down by the experts, which are taken, which are taken as standards for the entire country. And now they are, uh, they have been assessed and verified and uh, they've been certified. So that kind of hospital, everyone would like to visit with the, uh, and the technology will also help in that because maintaining those uh, standards uh, technology is very helpful. And the downtime, if you just uh, see the lab thing, the downtime for uh, uh, giving out the reports from the specimen to the reporting time, how much time does it take? So. In the manual system, the, the sample is taken, not many, not much of manpower there. The sample is taken, then the sample goes in, the waiting time is there. It will take two to three, four hours uh, uh, for the person to collect some specimens, then do the tests, and then uh, sending the, writing the reports and then giving out. With the, with the uh, computerized machines, you know, now the digital digitalization of labs also. Those uh, samples are taken in the containers and they are collected in the OPD area from where it directly goes to the, it has either manually uh, transferred to the lab 
the patient is not going to the lab directly. There may be, uh, it also helps in uh, the cross infection uh, transfers also, you know. So they, they are seated in their uh, area. They just give the collection, uh, the blood for collection or the urine samples, and then they come back and sit on there uh, in the waiting area in the OPD uh, lounge. And then the, their report, uh, the, the sample goes up to the lab. The machines are there. And in one go, for within 20, 15 to 20 minutes, about uh, hundreds of uh, uh, samples can be tested. And uh, maybe within the next 30, 35 minutes, the report comes down and they go back to the doctor, show it to them, get their uh, prescription. Of, either uh, for further uh, diagnosis or for further treatment or for more specialized uh, treatment, the doctor may refer, the doctor may give the medicine there, the pharm then the person goes to the pharmacy. All these medicines, when the prescription is given and again uh, sent to the pharmacy, the pharmacy will receive the, the person just has to take his uh, unique ID, which has been given at the registration counter to the pharmacy. And there the pharmacist will know, he will give, print a prescription or the prescription doctor might have present as per the systems the hospital may be following. The uh, prescription will be given along with the medicine to the patient. The patient will be explained and it ought to be done very fast. Uh, otherwise there are Supreme Court orders that the uh, the prescription should should be written in a uh, in capital letters, which the doctors we all know how doctors are so busy, so they have to write very fast. They the writings are not uh, readable and apprehensive, so that kind of uh, details will always be there. That kind those kind those kind of challenges will always be there. They have started. Many doctors have started. Uh, writing very nicely with in capital letters or even if in not in capital letters they have they have started writing uh, very proper good handwriting so the doctors handwritings are all, have also improved with <laughs> with this uh, accreditation's uh, demand of uh, uh, clear legible and comprehensive apprehensive uh, 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 writing of the prescription, the medicine name and everything. Otherwise, uh, it used to be said that uh, only the pharmacist or the uh, the shopkeeper, the medical store uh, person will be able to read the what doctor has written on the prescription. The person will not know what nobody else will be able to read it, not even the doctors many times. So he, though he knows what he has prescribed, of course, but uh, if you have to read it, it will be very difficult to read you know, what he has written. But now things have changed with the computers. They directly put in in the computer. This is and it takes less, lesser time. Uh, but uh, the the only problem is in our country, many old doctors may not be very computer savvy, uh, so they are finding a bit a bit difficult. Sometimes even uh, uh, our doctors they just don't have the proper gadgets in place. So that is taking some time, but it will be okay. We'll, we'll, with time, it will also pass. This phase will also pass. And everyone, everywhere, we'll see the computerized, uh, the computers being put on the uh, desk and the doctor looking at the unique ID. They get all the details. The, the registration slip will be on the computer monitor and the doctor can prescribe onto the uh, medicine. So all these things will keep on uh, uh, like uh, the changes are bound to happen and then keep on coming in. How, how will it help the accreditation process? See all the records, all the records from the lab, from the, uh, even uh, before I go further to the accreditation process, I, if you see the, uh, the x-rays, they have now become digital x-rays. Now digital x-ray, the advantage is you don't have to develop the film. It directly, the digital X-ray directly uh, comes onto the computer screen within a few seconds of taking the image. Now, coming to the uh, screen, the doctor can access it from his seat and uh, the, he can enhance or enlarge this uh, image to uh, for better analysis of uh, uh, the X-ray. And then, uh, of course, it can be even 
transferred online to elsewhere remotely sitting doctor uh, expert doctor who can give his opinion to the uh, doctor uh, seeing the patient uh, in case he has asked for his opinion and that that is all possible now with all these uh, technologies coming in uh, so all these things uh, what we were talking about this will help in and uh, important thing is the measurement of uh, things the uh, if you have to the, there is a saying that if you uh, don't measure properly you can't manage it properly so we need to have the proper uh, management of uh, things in the hospital uh, uh, what we are what we are doing in the hospital and how um uh, uh, how much in what quantities the uh, the medicines are uh, made available the indenting procedures all these things we have seen in the hospitals uh, while doing the assessments in the hospital uh, we we find it difficult many times where the manual system is uh, going on though they try to do they, they have made a system manual systems are also working but then many times we see the uh, the indenting procedures there are some uh, times there are uh, stock outs of medicines which are again uh, which adversely affect the scoring criteria of uh, the this accreditation process uh, there should not be any uh, stock outs of the medicine and many times medicines uh, Uh, are not uh, uh, there is no buffer stock for that then the expiry of medicines is manually checked many times they check but then we find a lot of times medicine expired medicines being found in the emergency drug tray is sometimes in the even in the OTs and labor rooms of many hospitals so a near expiry medicine so all these uh, checks can be if you are having a, uh, a digital this digital system or the computerized uh, inventory system so all those things can be uh, handled by the your software in that so all these technologies which are emerging and being accepted by the hospitals they are there are disadvantages also sometimes because uh, uh, all these uh, Uh, medicine uh, all these technologies they they cost they cost not medicine no, these technologies they cost those so they increase the cost then there is uh, always a danger of uh, uh, cyber security so when things are online the cyber crime is also developing at the same time when the technology is developing the cyber crime is also developing some men, many times the privacy may be also a challenge so all these issues are there yes but then uh, it helps in the process when all the records are required because when the accreditation is required to happen as asked for in hospital what we see is many times uh, the records are not properly maintained so we 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 did it till 3 uh, months back and uh, now we don't have uh, the person went away two persons left so we have we are left with less human resource so we don't have time to fill the, all those manual uh, times which the manual hours which is taken by the um, record keeping is uh, directly done by the once you take out some stock it directly uh, is uh, uh debited from the main stock so the, all these things uh, and whatever new stock is come in gets credited to the uh, computer in the computer so the stock is updated right there you just have to enter once and all the registers will be maintained in one go so these things uh, these are basic things all these uh, registers have to be maintained many times when the assessor is going and you have to Uh, show that we are doing this we are doing this we are doing this maybe at that moment you are doing but how long have you been doing it so it's not that that on particular day you are doing it it has to be done uh, for last one year two year three years as a person has to show at least one year records so if the records are not proper 
the accreditation may not uh, be given to you. So, the subject, so for certifications, only the entered data is seen. And if the entered data, you cannot uh, manage the entire things which are wrongly entered into the records. That uh, if uh, the assessor is uh, uh, sharp enough, and most of them are. So when, when they see, when they find these things, uh, the scoring pattern goes down for you. And that's that becomes a problem for the hospitals to go in for accreditation to, to get through the accreditation process. So these technologies, these uh, uh, all these important aspects of healthcare, which are, which should be uh, recorded properly. And in case of, it will help in medical legal uh, cases also if the proper details, demographic details, the personal details of the patient are there and, uh, and the medical legal cases are there. The records can be kept digitally for a longer, longer period. Like the medical, medical legal cases, MLC cases, the records have to be kept till there, there may be other uh, records, maybe uh, the states have got different uh, criteria to uh, shell them off, but other mainly the the uh, records for MLC cases have, have to be there lifelong till the case is going on. So we have to maintain all these records uh, uh, properly, manually, if it is done. It, it can be done, yes, but you need a lot of manpower, but you need a lot of human resource and that too very religiously working day-to-day -day basis on day-to-day -day basis to uh, put those records on time in the registers legibly and properly in proper columns. Many times we see the registers are not lined they, and they just uh, without headings they are just putting in. When they ask when we ask for headings they go to the first page so these are the headings of these columns. So the columns are made by hand. So all these things, if you are having a computer just on Excel uh, sheet, you can make one sheet and then keep on putting the records. There are, of course, various hospital softwares which have all the uh, forms and formats and which can be customized to your own needs. The hospitals may have different uh, requirements, some more additional columns to it, which can be added. Uh, this can be customized anytime the softwares are available, which can be also customized, uh, uh, which are available, or you can make your own customized software, or even simple Excel sheet can be made by your own hospital for your own records. So once you have all these things in place, and uh, uh, there will be not uh, any, no medical error, there will not be any uh, uh, stock outs, there will be no, no medicine in short supply that, that phase. Of not uh, not because of uh, your indenting procedure. Maybe if the market in the market it is not available, then it's a different case. But then uh, for accreditation process, if uh, you have that kind of a confirmation and you can show those proofs that it was not available in the market, then it was okay. Otherwise, uh, if you if because of your indenting procedure, because all those procedures will be seen in once there is a stock out and you say it was not available in the market, they will see when it was, when was it um, indented for. So all those cross checks are there. Many times uh, we see those uh, manual recording system. I was uh, recently somewhere uh, for assessment and uh, I saw in the, in the lab, there were four or five names uh, which have four five entries in that register for uh, lab tests, which for which were different from the OPD register. So wrongly entered names on those uh, on those numbers that unique ID which was given by the registration counter, which was again manually operated. Those numbers were for some other patients, and here they were entered for some other patients. So it it was a mistake in part of on part of the uh, uh, the lab is, lab uh, technician who was entering who was doing the entry, but uh, at the same time uh, it may be taken as some mischief being done, taken done by the uh, the lab technician and uh, doing some tests 
on, on some other numbers who have not even registered. Of course, the tests are being done free, if, even if it is uh, uh, in the hospital, which are in a private hospital where every services are charged. So uh, there, it may be seen as a wrong practice of the uh, wrongdoing of the uh, technician. So all these can happen to avoid all those things. Technology is very helpful. Of course, there are disadvantages, as I said, but uh, at the same time, most of the things are advantages and the accreditation process will be definitely helpful if the records are maintained uh, online as per the uh, requirement of the accreditation process. And as per the standards, the clinical practices are taken, the inputs by the hospital for the benefit of the patient is there. And many times the, uh, the record keeping and the, the, what I was talking about, the lab services being uh, computerized, many times the cross-infection will also um, be reduced and the hospital acquired infections will be reduced which is a big uh, challenge right now for the hospitals that patients right now with COVID uh, and uh, this pandemic in uh, um, existence, we we see a uh, lot of cross infections happening. If the patient if patients were not going to the hospitals, they were afraid of going to the hospitals. They they had heart attacks at home. They didn't. They had pains, but they didn't go to the hospital because in, uh, of the danger of catching COVID there. And then finally, they had a heart attack at home. And then subsequently, they were taken there. Sometimes it was too late for the patient to reach the hospital in time for treatment, and uh, they lost their lives. So there are there are certain. Uh, uh, Advantages and disadvantages, I would say advantages are many, much many, and accreditation process will definitely be very much helped by in the hospitals acquiring uh, the technology, the technological advancements. Of course, the patient time, uh, the downtime of the reporting on the, the medicine, uh, medical errors, all those are bound to reduce with with time as and when the as in uh, as more and more technologies are developed and uh, being accepted and being practiced by the different hospitals all these processes will be very helpful uh, for uh, uh, the accreditation processes and uh, uh, i hope uh, the, the national digital health mission which is in a nation stage right now of course, the uh, I was told health cards are being made uh, in abundance now. People have started getting their health cards also digitally. So all these things are happening, and we should uh, be keeping ourselves ready to to accept these kinds of advancements, the technological advancements, both at the clinical and the service provider side as well as the service seeker side. From as a patient, from the patient side, we we should be all ready to accept these uh, new technologies, and we should uh, again. I would say accreditation can happen. This not mandatory that the technology, the health tech, health tech should be there in the hospital. Without that, uh, but then uh, health tech is bound to be there. The technology is expanding every day the new technologies are coming on coming in day, every day and uh, every hour now uh, we are working the people are working on those uh, aspects very fast and every day we see a new invention a new machine coming in so all this is bound to happen with all the technological advancements but we as uh, clinicians we as hospital uh, people, the service providers, as well as the patients the, and the service seekers should be ready to accept these things. The accreditation processes are definitely very bound to get a lot of uh, advantage and a lot of benefit uh, out of these uh, records which are maintained digitally and com on computerized systems. So. Uh, whatever questions we have, I have given very, very basic things on accreditation and technology. Uh, Dr. Marvin has spoken on technology mainly. And uh, whatever 
is uh, if there is there are any doubts or any any questions please uh, this is the time i think I've, i'll uh, give it over to uh, ms somya for uh, her deliberations ms somya please take take charge from here uh, thank you sir uh, indeed uh, it was a detailed uh, uh, an explanation with reference to building smart hospitals and uh, how the uh, quality improvement can be done when adopting technologies uh, so sir my question would be according to you what will be the five major technological changes that you have seen so far and how it is helping in your accreditation process okay number one is the registration the computerized registration the unique id is given which will be um, uh, presentable which will be directly transferred on all the clinical uh, and the clinics where the doctors are sitting so they can directly have an access to the uh, the patient details and uh, when the uh, the patient goes to the doctor all those details are not asked again and again so and the doctor can directly enter uh, the the uh, the indent for or the requisition for diagnostics which will be uh, communicated or transferred uh, online to the um, to the sample collector or to the lab technician directly from there the uh, the advantage the time taken by for all those things from going to the lab searching for the lab is just within the opd area the collection point will be there so all those things then the patient will just be waiting there for the thing so all these things and the records will be available uh, immediately the the of course the report will take 20, 30 35 minutes whatever time they take if the small we already have uh, uh, in the small hospitals auto analyzers are there where the uh, the cbc and uh, many tests are done and the reports are immediately given out the sometimes some or some, some of the machines are also having printers so they print out the reports and the reports are immediately given to the patients and they will, they come back within 15 20 minutes to the doctor with their reports same with the diagnostics so all these again the patient uh, the turnover time from the for the patient from the registration to uh, the pharmacy and coming out will be reduced so the uh, this is one advantage uh, the hospital will have for accreditation process the turnover time from for the patient from entry to exit you know from the registration to the pharmacy pharmacy he only he or she only reaches when the doctor has written the prescription before that they are just uh, uh, waiting for the diagnostics for the uh, for the x rays and the, not many thing once they have already gone and then they can also be checked by other specialists if this doctor wants uh, some dentist to see some if he has gone to the ent for some ear, ear pain so uh, the doctor may ask for the ent surgeon also for uh, the ent surgeon may ask for the dental surgeon also to to have a look at it so the patient can directly go there and the or the doctor can directly uh, communicate with the uh, dental surgeon and they can, the patient can be transferred there and the all those uh, turnover times uh, the turnover time will be very much reduced the, and not only the time it will be the hospital acquired infection the cross infection which the patient is subjected to being more time in the hospital will be reduced so this is one time the medical errors will be reduced when you have the immediate access to other specialists and uh, uh, the system is such that it can be directly um, uh, like uh, consulted with others other technician clinicians and at the same time the uh, the radio diagnostics are also available the lab diagnostics are all the lab results are also available online so all these things will definitely be a good help and for regist- accreditation process many uh, records which are not uh, properly uh, maintained this uh, system this digital system will definitely be of a great help to them and uh, uh, dr marvin al- also doing nvh accreditation so he understands the nvh requirement everywhere we had to see the records records are a must 
and records are in a problem they are the main problem for <laughs> admissions because we see at least one year old records and when you check the records there are a lot of uh, problems and we have to challenge there are a big challenge to give them scores so uh, dr marvin your take on this yes sir so <clears throat> we definitely uh, check records and you know the mrd is a key there and uh, we see all sorts of uh, patients and say for example uh, uh, you know uh, our mtp licenses uh, tells us that uh, the user name and uh, the identity needs to be masked so we need to have a special uh, record or register where we give numbers for patient instead of uh, uh, names so all that also needs to be checked and uh, and especially the narcotic forms narcotic uh, license numbers whether this uh, narcotic privilege has been given to that a prescriber or the doctor for example anesthetist or an emergency patient or consultant so is the privilege there with the hr record that needs to be checked and whether the prescription uh, of or the, uh, uh, the orders given by the doctors whether it is been signed dated and the register number is written so all this uh, one year uh, record or a sample record will be definitely taken and checked uh during uh, the uh, you know the inspection of the hospital so basically nothing to worry uh we uh, any standard or any aggregated bodies would give you standards and objectives but the policy will be written by the own hospital or the manual will be written yeah. by the hospital so uh, we check the uh, manual and the policy written by the hospital so we we definitely uh, look into whether you have ordered your own policy so that's the key here and it's definitely not a all finding exercise is the fact finding exercise definitely we are here to improve standards and uh, quality is definitely a continuing uh, ongoing uh, thing so definitely it's continuous improving as well that's why we we have cqis and uh, and so we help in uh, adherence and equality improvement so that's all for me sir anything else uh, ms samya on this yes i have a uh, very uh... a good question here so uh, one doctor has asked do you think that telemedicine or adapting uh, telemedicine uh, practices in your hospitals is good for quality accreditation or would the points vary like that i'm asking so telemedicine is a concept which is coming up so that has nothing to do with accreditation so no, accreditation is nothing to do with accreditation it's all software but uh, you know on quality improvement project we have to submit at least 3 to 4 uh, continuous uh, quality improvement projects to the nabh team members which they when they come and uh, do the surveillance or re accreditation so that time during that time we have to definitely show our quality improvement project we can add it as a quality improvement project what we have achieved to it and uh, uh, what uh, it has enhanced for patients uh, uh you know patient care or patient centric care we can show that way but telemedicine has nothing to do with it presently it's not even nowhere in the uh, the checklist or any standards uh, for any accreditation body yeah. thank you sir and uh, this question goes to uh, dr marvin so uh, dr marvin you have been seeing so many technological advancements uh been traveling from uh, various hospitals and uh, been practicing in uh, various hospitals in the country right now and uh, what were the major phenomenal changes uh, uh you have seen so far and uh, uh, what is your prediction you know in the coming year because we are still in pandemic now we are still in the way of embracing telemedicine and uh, there are so many things that we are waiting variables and everything so according to you what to, what is your take on this so uh, see definitely anything and everything has improvement say for example uh, we used to use a telephone which is 10 15 years back we should we should we used to dial the number from 0 to uh, you know 9 and then come back once you make a mistake you have to cut the entire phone and then again re, re recall the same number so that was tedious so and even a call from here to uh, abroad was a hefty task you know uh, say for example you have to call a us a country which has a different time zone you need to book a call through a trunk call in the post office or the nearby 
uh, neighboring trunk office of the village wherever you are and therefore that opposite party also has to take the trunk call at a similar time but but different times zones we are we would be in morning they would be in midnight so that also was an issue but nowadays technology has come uh, with a ease you can call any in, anyone in any part of the world and uh, you can access uh, you know um, the technology has grown so far i'm just trying to uh, differentiate the technology which was 10 15 years back and now which technology we are into see there were three types of revolution mainly one was uh, uh, industrial revolution then was social revolution now we are into technology revolution so now technology is advancing a lot more and in healthcare per se say we used to use glass bottles and we used to use mercury thermometers and mercury is nowadays a hazardous tool so we don't use we have gone in digital uh, sigma manometer we don't have a sigma manometer digital uh, bp apparatus and digital uh, you know thermo and we have gone into infrared uh, where we don't need to even touch the patient and get the temperature of the patient so we have advanced even at a minor level so majorly we have gone into an heart transplant we have gone into liver transplant we have gone into small intestine transplant which is recently done in one of our hospitals in chennai so we had even transplanted small intestine which was which was not even thought to 10 15 years back okay so only thing which we didn't transplant is brain but sure or head transplant where definitely that is also going to be a reality in near future so health care advancements have gone beyond extent and the overall um, the see as doctors what we do we postpone death isn't it so death and death is real as well as life on the world is also real so we are trying to postpone death definitely uh, the the average lifespan ratio is definitely improved to 75 to 80 years of good health, healthy life so that's where we are seeing advancements and uh, and genetically modifying we 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 will soon genetically modify disease and put the gene into the particular human so that he or she cannot become a diabetic he or she uh, will not uh, turn a uh, hypertensive that kind of uh, genetically modified genes will be uh, coming up in the near future uh, which we call as nanotechnology where we regrow tissues these days so liver and parts of the organ are are being regrown from the uh, stem cells and lot more advancements are yet to come definitely future is big for healthcare and uh, the human population is what i feel yeah the non non abrasive uh, surgeries are there nowadays which uh, are only possible through the computerized uh, screens where we can see and then do the surgeries so all these technology is definitely helping a lot and as uh, dr marvin said lot has to come now we use robotic systems like da vinci where yeah. you, the doctor needs to be at the other counterpart end and then the robots can operate precisely why we use robots is say for example a gall bladder uh, where we used to open open up such a big scar used to be there but now minimal uh, minimal invasive laparoscopic is there yeah. and uh, and uh, robots why they even though after laparoscopy why robots are used is in a gall gall bladder you can have a leak in the abdomen which can cause lot of peritonitis other infections but if a robot uh, if you use robotic technology then the the surgery is more precise and the uh, the patient can walk home on the same day because uh, by morning if you shift a patient for uh, a surgery the evening the same day evening you can walk away the similarly you have angiograms done uh, on a day care through basis where you you go and get your heart angiogram done and the patient can walk home the same hour after the angiogram so we are grown from the well and you know we are we are definitely hoping for a great uh, milestone in healthcare uh, thank you doctor uh, i think we have taken up all the questions uh, now and uh, uh, maybe can we wind up the session now yes yeah we can wind up if there are more questions uh, dr somya may ms somya we can uh, uh, answer later on also if we have the participants sure. give more questions we can answer them later sure. on sure so you can sure, communicate sure. to we'll them sure we will do that yeah sure sure so uh, once again thank you uh, everyone to join uh, who have joined for the session today on technology advancements and the quality improvement in hospital and building smart hospitals for the future i would like to thank our speakers for the day dr mervin and mr uh, farid sir uh, uh, as well
totally spending uh, a quality one hour time one hour time with us uh, thank you so much looking forward for the future collaborations and uh, thank you thank you so much thank you everyone thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you.